In today's video traders, I'm gonna be talking to you guys a little bit about trading news in the foreign exchange market. My own two cents, how I like to look at these events uh, and some ways that I like to trade them. So stay tuned, let's go ahead and get into it right now. Hello traders, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and on my channel, I like to talk about trading and investing in a realistic fashion. We're not here to get rich quick. We are here to learn the realities and the skills required to actually trade and invest successfully and I like to just kind of share my own journey. Now, I have to talk about news uh, carefully because in my own journey, news was a really touchy, dangerous subject for me when I was a newer trader. And I know a lot of traders get really caught up because they really wanna trade these big news spikes uh, that we see happen in the Forex market where price you know, shoots one way or it shoots in the other. And there's this big excitement about you know jumping in and catching the move and trying to, to run with the news. Now, let me just go ahead and say a lot of times what traders try to do is when the news is set to release, they put a buy order and they put a sell order above and below price and they try and catch whichever direction the market goes. Now, let me just tell you really quick that this is a really, really dumb way to trade. This is just my opinion. Of course, there will be people, be people who disagree with me here, uh, but let me tell you exactly why. Now, when markets are about to have news, you and I are not the only ones who know that markets are about to drop news and that volatility will probably spike. It's actually uh, pretty apparent to everybody, especially the brokers who are going to be providing you the ability to buy or sell in a market that is trading during news. So a lot of times what happens is that brokers will actually really, really increase the bid ask spread. You know, when you get into a market and you try and buy here, but you actually get filled uh, here, right? Well, that is the spread. If you don't know what a spread is, uh, I definitely encourage you to Google what a spread is in Forex, look up bid and ask. But basically during uh, news, brokers want to reduce their exposure to the market. They don't want to put themselves in jeopardy or danger. So they drastically increase the bid ask spread to kind of protect themselves from volatility. Okay. It's not them being evil. A lot of times people say, oh, it's the broker trying to, to scam individuals. And, and the reality is that is just not the case. Uh, it's brokers covering themselves, right? They don't want to be subject to massive swings in the market that a lot of times these news events happen. So a lot of times, again, uh, new traders, they, they try and put a buy and a sell above and below price. And if price jumps up, they want to buy it, right? They want to jump in here uh, and ride the momentum. And if the market sells off, they want to jump in and join here. The problem here, here again becomes because the spread is so, so wide, a lot of times you want to get bought, uh, let's say you wanted to sell here, right? And you actually end up getting filled somewhere down here. Or if you're lucky, maybe down here, right? So because you get that spread, this is called slippage, okay? And this is the big problem when trading news is you have a lot of slippage in the market. This is where basically you wanted to get filled here, but you actually got filled here. And look at that. Now you have a terrible entry on a price movement because the spread got so wide and a lot of people, again, they try to attribute this to brokers scamming them, but it's really just the brokers protecting themselves because they don't want to take the other side of a bunch of trades. Uh, they, you know, they are the ones providing liquidity. So they don't want to expose themselves to massive amounts of risk, uh, no matter what the market does. That is not their job. They are not trying to speculate as much as they are trying to just provide you liquidity as their uh, business. That's their business model, right? So it's not the brokers being evil. A lot of times people blame the brokers. Sure, there's probably games being played by unregulated brokers, but in my opinion, I would not be trading with an unregulated broker either ways. You should be trading with a regulated broker because uh, there it's much harder for them to pull games like that. So uh, again, trade with a regulated broker. But in today's video, uh, that was just kind of my preface with all this. My thoughts on actually how I like to trade news is not actually the news release. So again, if we get news in the markets, we'll scroll to another example. If we get news in the markets, it's very clear. We're looking at the one hour chart right now uh, and the price is skyrocketing, right? So clearly there was some very bullish news here on the USD CAD. So the dollar Canadian spiked very sharply. In fact, we could actually use uh, TradingView and see how many pips this was. 
And if I just hold shift and left click, this will show that there was about a 67 and a total move there of 122 pips in just uh, three hours of price action. That's quite a bit of move and it attracts a lot of new traders who wanna get in on the action. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get in on the action, but we need to be careful that we don't trade like a dummy. Uh, at least my opinion would be trading like a dummy with trying to buy into this because although it can work sometimes, sometimes you get really, really ugly reversals right after the news and a lot of people get stopped out and the slippage really can kill their account. So that's very dangerous and not the way I like to trade. So what I like to do is I like to wait for the actual release uh, to, to happen before making any sort of decisions. So this right here is the release, okay? We'll put R for release. This is where news hits the fan and prices go flying either up or down and sometimes they just do this right? Uh, so news can do all sorts of things. It can move up, it can move down, or it can just bounce back and forth and stop a bunch of people out. So for me, I don't like to mess around with trading the actual release. For me, I like to look at things after the fact. So after we have that initial spike, this is where I like to get involved because there are some awesome opportunities, at least in my experience, after the news is actually released. And what generally happens, not always, but a lot of times we do see some drift back the way the market came from. So what I mean by that is that the market spikes up and a lot of times we drift back down. A lot of times when the market spikes down, we drift back up. If we go back really quick to this example previously, notice what happened. Did we go all the way back up? No but we spiked the downside very strong on the release. We'll put R for release. And then what happens? We shot down for a little bit, but then we started our climb back up, right? So, and again, we'll go back to where we just were over here on this, this uh, big up candle. You can see we spiked to the upside, then we spiked a little bit further, and then we started to trail back some of the way. And I think, did this one go all the way back? Not quite, but we did make it quite back uh, a substantial amount of this move. Now I'm gonna show you a cool trick that I like to do when it comes to news. If we were to use a fib and draw from the low to the high of the move here, you can actually see that we pulled back all the way to the 61.8. Now this is the cool thing about news is because a lot of times it creates quite a gap, quite a, quite a extreme move to the upside. And a lot of times there's some profit taking right? So up in this area, what's happening? A lot of times there is profit taking. We'll put PT. We have people who want to build shorts, right? So sellers come in and this may be long-term traders. This may be investors who want to short this market, right? It might be day traders. It might be long-term traders, whatever it is. A lot of times after these big gaps, up, uh, give big jump ups, this provides uh, a lot of traders with the idea, oh, okay, this might be actually a good area to take a short and uh, maybe in a long-term downtrend, whatever it is, right? Just as an example, a lot of times we see market participants say, hey, the, the news was a big overreaction and is likely to fade back. And again and again in the market, we see this actually happening. This is quite a common occurrence where we see a big spike to the upside and then a fade back down, okay? And so how can we actually trade this? Well, there's a couple different ways, uh, but one of my favorite ways personally is to wait and look for some sort of strong signal that the market could be rolling over. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Uh, one very popular way is to look for lower highs, right? So if we form a high here, and then we say, oh, there's a lower high right here, right? That's one signal that we could be looking for. And so what a lot of times uh, I like to do here is if I see a st extreme stretch like this and a big rejection, what we could do is we could <clears throat> set a sell setup uh, after this candle, right? So if we see some sort of big rejection or whatever it is, right? Let's say that um, we decide, okay, this candle looks very, very bearish. We've got a bearish pin bar along the top on an hourly bar. I'm interested in taking a short on the next bar. Well, if we were to put a stop just above the highs there, right? And look for something like a two to one, we may have actually gotten a pretty decent trade here. We may have had to wait a little bit, but again, notice this concept right here, looking for rejection. And remember, every movement is going to be slightly unique. They're not gonna be identical. But in this case, we could have used this candle as basically our signal to look for a 
down uh, movement, right? Because we just had a big rejection by sellers who basically stepped in, uh, whether it was people pay taking profit or just shorts trying to get involved. We basically saw this market uh, slowly decline back down to uh, uh, just around this area here. Now, again, this is kind of cool because it provides us a decent setup where we have a clearly defined risk, right? We use the previous high. Once we see that spike and that top seemingly has been made, that's where things can get interesting. Now, I don't like to just necessarily short just because the market is up, right? Taking shorts here, here, here could be a really dangerous game, but looking for any sort of sign of rejection can be really cool. So how can we find rejection? Well, for me, uh, things like candlestick patterns, right? We can look for lower highs, we can look for breakouts to the downside, right? For example, let's say that we, let's just draw an example really quick. Let's say that the market uh, spikes up significantly. And then we kind of form a top there, we form a bottom there, and then we see something like this, right? And then we see a move below structure. Well, this could actually be a really decent setup to look for price to continue lower. And again, this is something that we see in the markets again and again, right? <clears throat> so looking for broken structure and trading the retest after a substantial move up, a lot of times you see the fade. And this is really what this concept is called, is trading the news fade. It is a very common uh, strategy. It doesn't work out, of course, all the time. Nothing really does. This is Forex. Unfortunately, if anything was, was perfect, then everybody would be doing it and it no longer would work, right? So that is just kind of my way of trading news. My favorite way is to look for fades, look for chances where, again, here's like another one, right? We've got a big move to the downside, in this case, about 50 pips. And then what happened? Well, we started to fade to the upside. So what I'm looking for, generally speaking, keeping it very simple, is I'm looking for signs of a reversal back the way we came. And if that comes into play, that's where I'm looking to set uh, a trade. We could keep our stops relatively tight. We've got uh, usually a defined low to look for. And again, here's some more examples of this. Uh, this one did not work as, as well, right? Because we didn't see much of a, a rebound. We saw price dip and then keep going. So that's what I'm saying is not always is it going to work, but take a look at this case. In fact, this might be a pretty decent example uh, of a trade that worked out. Check this out. So if we, uh, I'm not actually sure, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we can see it actually dropped lower uh, afterwards. But for example here, we basically popped up. We did exactly what we were just talking about, where we saw a price jump up. We started to trade sideways. And then we broke through that support level. And on the retest here, this is the concept that we're looking for is the fade continuation. And sure enough, what happened? Price lowered and kept going and retraced all the way back down to where the news started. Again, this happens very often in the world of Forex trading. Uh, news a lot of times is already factored in and the, the price jumps or one way or the other, and then it kind of reverses. Not always, but again, a very common occurrence in the world of Forex. We'll see if we can get any other examples. Here's one that did not work out, right? We saw price rise and then continue. Um, but again, a lot of times. There's a lot of, uh, you know, this is just one concept to add to your toolbox is kind of the purpose of this is to talk about, you know, examples where a lot of times we do see spikes one way and then price fades back the other direction. Guys, if this was helpful to you, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up uh, and let me know how do you trade news? Comment it if you have any other ideas. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you back in the next one.